Okay, in this video, we're going to actually create a ball. And for the behavior of this ball, I want it to be able to bounce around and just keep flying at a constant velocity. We don't want it affected by gravity. So if it, uh, essentially, we're going to be uh, controlling the movement of this ball with our own logic rather than handing it over to the physics engine and having the physics engine take care of it. So in order to do that, First, we need to create our own ball, and this is going to be of type actor. So let's go to uh, our content folder, right click, create a new folder, and let's make this our blueprints folder. So we can call this blueprints, and in blueprints, we can right click, create a new blueprint class, and select the actor class, and we can simply call this ball. So our ball actor is going to be the ball in the game that can bounce around and basically as soon as it hits a wall we want it to bounce off and go in the other direction. So let's double click on this ball and first we can actually add a static mesh so that we can have a actual ball mesh to work with. So let's call the ball mesh ball and why don't we go ahead and uh, actually let's call it ball mesh so as not to confuse the mesh with the actual ball actor and let's set the static mesh and in our starter content we have this sphere it's called shape sphere so we can set that and that will be our ball so here we have our ball and what we want to do is make this ball move and we can do that by going into the event graph and using the tick function now the tick function uh, can be fired off, it's fired off every frame, and there's a specific node that I want to introduce to you, and that is the add actor world offset node. So if we right click and type that, add actor world offset, we have the add actor world offset node, and if we just bring that in, and for the delta location, just put in some sort of vector, what it's going to do is it's going to take the location of the actor and it's going to change it every time this add actor world offset node is called. So if it's hooked up to event tick, it'll be called every frame and every frame we will change the location by the delta location vector. For example, if we put a 1 in the X, then every location we will add delta location to the location of the actor, which is this actor which means every, lo every uh, frame, one will be added to the x, and it should move along the positive x direction. So let's go ahead and just test this out and see how it works. We'll drag a ball in, and I'm gonna dr bring the ball up a little bit. Its location is negative 80. I wanna put it at zero, and that way we'll have a sort of frame of reference in the z direction. And if it's at zero, why don't we go ahead and see what happens when we hit play? So you'll see there that every frame we're adding one to the X component of the location and this is essentially going to have our ball move steadily in the X direction by one every frame. And now let's take a look at what happens if we hit Shift F1 to get our mouse cursor. And if we go ahead and click uh, Eject, so I'm going to scroll this out, click Eject that'll allow us to maneuver around in the world you'll see that the ball passed right through the wall so that's one thing to take note of and it just keeps going so it doesn't collide with anything and and that's fine we haven't really set up any collision parameters or anything like that but I want to go ahead and show you something that happens when we come over to the add actor world offset and we take a look at the sweep now sweeping is a technique that is used in physics engines and game engines and what it does essentially is every time we move this actor we check to see if it has collided with something and sweeping if we click that to enable sweeping this will allow us to detect that collision and stop us from passing through so with sweep selected uh, we should be able to detect any of those collisions. Now one key thing to keep in mind is that this is add actor world offset. So this applies to an actor itself and right now our ball mesh is not the root of our actor. It just follows along with the actor. So this sweep is only going to take effect if the thing it's moving, which is the root of an actor, has a collision. So the ball mesh itself 
has a collision and if we drag it on top of default scene root and make the ball mesh itself the root now add actor world offset sweep will make sense and it will actually work so let's go ahead and give this a try by hitting play and we'll see that here the ball is moving towards the wall and as soon as it hits the wall it is in fact stopping so the sweep prevents the add actor world offset from actually working so when this is checked if the uh, sweep actually detects that we are colliding with something we will not apply this delta offset we will not apply the world offset and so this sweep allows us to uh, allow the ball to no longer pass through things and detect if we were going to pass through them okay so so that's great and just keep in mind with the ball mesh selected that we do need query and physics both enabled for this to work the way we want it to because we're detecting sweeps and that needs to have query enabled and then of course physics allows us to use those collision volumes and detect those collisions okay so that looks good and now that we have the ability for the ball to move we don't want to just hard code this positive y direction every time we want it to move we want it to move in a specific direction and we want that direction to be able to change and so we can easily represent our ball's direction with a vector so we're going to go ahead and add a new variable we're going to call this direction and we're going to take this direction variable and change it into a vector and we're going to hit compile and we can give this just some basic uh, direction width. For example, if we hit one in the X and one in the Y, then this will move in the diagonal uh, in between the positive X and Y directions. Now the direction should be a normalized vector. It should be have a magnitude of one because we want that magnitude to be one so that we can multiply it by any sort of value that we consider to be our absolute speed so we can actually create a new variable and call it speed and make this a float and then whatever the speed value is we can multiply that by our normalized direction to make this a, a speed with the magnitude that we choose and this way we can keep our speed constant so for example if our speed is say 10 then our vector will have a length of 10 as long as we normalize it so let's take our direction here get direction drag off and normalize so now after we normalize it it will have a value of one of course the tolerance is how close you want this vector to be to the value of one based on our calculations because uh, as you normalize a vector that involves some calculations that will result in an approximate value and this tolerance of 0 0.0001 says make that value this close to one and so it will continue uh, iterating over the solution until it converges close enough to that value. So if you don't want this to be as expensive an operation, you can make the tolerance lower, for example, 0.01 or even 0.1. And what that will do is result in the vector's magnitude being close to 1 and plus or minus 0.1 of an error tolerance. So uh, that is since we're doing this in event tick, for now, we might want that tolerance to be sort of low so that the computations don't take up too much during the tick. Okay, so we have our normalized direction vector, and we can multiply it by a scalar value. So vector times float, and speed is what we will multiply it by. And then, of course, we can plug that in. And now, whichever direction the direction vector points, that's the direction we will move the ball and we will also move it at a speed of 10 no matter where we are pointing. So if we hit play, then we're moving in the di diagonal direction and since sweep is enabled, we will hit the wall and this will prevent it from going through the wall and so everything is working as we expect. So this is great, but you may be wondering, well, didn't we mention we wanted the ball to bounce? And if it's not bouncing, it's just sticking to the wall, that's not what we want. So we can actually make the, the ball bounce by changing the direction vector. And we want to change the direction vector, and in order to do that, 
the resulting new direction has to be a reflected vector off of the surface that we hit. And so we can calculate that reflection using a little bit of vector math. And luckily, we don't have to do the math ourselves. There's a node that does it for us in Unreal Engine. But just to sort of uh, demonstrate what I mean uh, by reflection vector, what we can do is we can pull up a quick paint program. So let's do a tr pull up trusty paint. And for demonstration purposes, let's explain what we mean by a reflection vector. So here's a wall and our wall is facing a certain direction and this face that is the wall has its own normal vector and a normal vector in a sense is basically the vector that points orthogonal to the wall it's flat per uh, perpendicular to the wall surface and so we can represent this by a uh, arrow uh, coming out of the wall so why don't we go ahead and create a vector here and this will be our normal vector the vector that is perpendicular or orthogonal to the wall so we can call this vector n for normal okay so we have our normal vector and the ball may be moving towards the wall so we have a ball the ball has its own direction we could represent that by the vector that is the direction of the, of the ball and this vector is pointing in a certain direction. So when the ball hits the wall, we have a vector and its relationship to the normal vector, and it looks like this. So this would be the direction of the, uh, of the ball. And when the ball bounces off of the wall, we want the bounce to go in the correct direction. And that direction is calculated based on the wall of reflection which uh, on the law of reflection and the law of reflection states that a it's, it's basically used for things like light reflections and things like that but any type of reflection states that the angle is going to be the same on both sides of the reflection so if we were to say that this this right here is an angle this right here and I don't want to use a straight line uh, to to represent that I want to actually make it a, a curved line like that so this angle here is the same as this angle here the reflection is symmetrical and so what we mean by reflection vector is this result vector here. so if we have a direction vector and we want to reflect it using the normal of the face that we're bouncing on then the result will be this reflected vector here so that way as soon as our ball hits the wall if we calculate this new direction vector we can set that to be our new direction and that will work for any wall as long as we know the normal vector of the wall so how do we get that and how do we calculate the reflection vector so let's go back to Unreal Engine and let's figure out how to do this so the key result is going to depend on something that is uh, that we get when we use add actor world offset with sweep enabled you see with sweep enabled as soon as we hit something then that registers as a hit event and if we have a hit event we have a hit result so take a look at this sweep hit result here this is what we get when sweep is enabled and it's a it's a structure it's a data structure that contains a lot of different pieces of information regarding the hit and that's why it's called the hit result so if we drag off of this you'll see down at the bottom we have this option to break the hit result this is kind of like breaking a vector into its components this will break the hit result into all of its components and look there's a lot of them and you'll see that this kind of looks like an event hit. It has things like uh, hit actor, hit component, and this allows us to see just what we hit. Now, if we wanted to just see what we hit whenever we hit it, we can take the hit actor and we can print something to the screen. For example, we can get the name of the actor by using the node get object name, and this returns us a string and if we go ahead and use the print string node we can plug that right in and as soon as we hit something we can print the name of that thing
So why don't we go ahead and test this out and you'll see that before we hit the wall, let's move this away from the wall, before we hit the wall it's printing none every frame or every check and then once it hits the wall it starts printing the name of the wall. And you'll notice that the, the name of this wall is wall 400 by 209. So whichever object we hit, this basically allows us to get a reference to it. So here's this, this particular wall which has a different name. So since we can get a reference to the object that we hit, we can also get other information. In fact, a lot of that information is right here in the hit result because we need we often need the normal vector for things like reflections you'll see that we have this impact normal here this is exactly what we were talking about when we talked about the normal vector the vector that was normal to the face or the surface that we're hitting okay so since we have the normal vector how do we get the reflection vector well that's very easy there's a node called get reflection vector and it's basically a function of the vector. So I'm going to drag our direction out here and get the node for the direction. That's the direction the ball's traveling in. And we can drag off and type get reflection. And we got get reflection vector. And look, it says here's the direction. You pass that in. And then it asks you for the surface normal. Here we can use the impact normal. That's the, the normal vector to the surface we hit. So that's exactly what we want. And what's the result? Well, the result is the new reflection direction. And it comes out normalized auto automatically for us, which is good. So we don't have to use this expensive normalize function every, every single frame. It already comes out normalized for us based on the calculations. So since we have our reflection vector, all we need to do is change the direction to this reflected vector like this. Drag out direction, set direction, use that value, and then simply plug this in. And what this will do in a sense is take the, uh, the ball direction, reflect it about the impact normal whenever it hits something, and change the direction. So that's exactly what we want. Now, one thing I want to do every frame whenever we add actor world offset, and that is we want to make sure that as the ball bounces around that it doesn't work its way up or down in the Z direction. So I'm going to delete these nodes, and I'm going to take the direction. Um, I'm going to multiply it by the velocity, so vector times float, and uh, speed uh, is what I meant when I said velocity and we're going to break this vector so go ahead and break vector and we're gonna take the X and Y components of this vector and we're gonna make a new vector so make vector and we're gonna use the X and Y components and we're gonna leave the Z at 0 so if at any point the Z seems to start deviating from 0 we're just going to ignore that and only set it to 0 here and this will be the del Delta location that we will use for add actor world offset. So not only is the direction always going to be the magnitude of speed, it's always gonna have a Z of zero. So that way our changes in uh, direction will only take place on the XY plane. Okay, let's test this out and see how we have our bounce uh, ability in the game. So let's hit play. And here we have our ball, it's bouncing just as we expected. And of course it goes through the bottom, which uh, for now we may actually want to pr place a barrier there if we want it to uh, stop, uh, if it, we want it to stop and bounce off. So what we could do is we can go back to architecture and drag in a wall. And we know these have a height of 200. So let's take the 400 by 200 wall and we can hit E, rotate it by 90 degrees and hit R and scale it and that way we can have a barrier here just so that we can keep our ball in the area as we do our testing. So we can hit play and there we have it. There is our ball, it's moving around. We still also have our uh, basic, basic default pawn class here that we can move around. We're gonna get to basically how, what we're gonna do with pawns uh, and create a pawn. But for now, just notice that we have our ball. We hit Shift F1 to get our mouse cursor. We can find the ball in the world outliner, 
And if we look at its location, it's X and Y of the location are changing, but the, zero, the Z stays at zero, and that's exactly what we want. Okay, so that's how we create a bouncing ball. So that's exactly uh, what we wanted, and you'll see that our own logic for bouncing is actually pretty simple. And this is how, uh, how in general you can get a reflection vector if you ever wanna reflect something off of a surface, but you just need that impact surface normal vector that you can use to reflect your direction vector over. So that will, that will conclude this video and we will continue in the next one.